Hey everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe, and this is Bootstrapping Tools Let's Build, where we help scrappy bootstrappers just like yourself figure out how to supercharge their workflows by adding automation or loco tools to their portfolio. Now, before we dive into today's topic, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We got lots of videos up there that go through all sorts of low code and no code solutions out there, including Retool, App Scripts, um, Airtable, uh, Google Scripts. Uh, there's so, so many different options out there, and we may have tons of videos around it. But if you don't see what you're looking for, feel free to shoot an email over to feedback at bootstrapping.tools. We'll be happy to take a look at that application and possibly make a video just for you. Now, in today's topic, we're gonna to be covering how you can route emails uh, based on a selection in a Google form submission. So what that uh, essentially is helpful for is if you created a Google form to help with your internal you know, support requests or something like that, or even just the external support requests, and on your Google form, you're gonna have like a dropdown that has like the type of request that this is, whether it's a data request or a support request, or it's a billing issue or anything like that. Uh, you can take that, uh, response that that value um, that the user selected and then route the email specifically to where it might need to go so if it's a billing issue maybe it's going to go to like your finance department if it's a support issue it's going to go over to your customer support team uh, if it has to do with refunds maybe that also goes to your customer support team but essentially you're going to be able to curate uh, the the responses or or sends uh, those responses over to the correct departments or teams that should be handling uh, that user's uh, submission. But enough talk, let's go ahead and dive into it. We got lots to cover. So up on the screen over here, we have uh, the demo that we use to hook up a Google form to a Google sheet, as well as the one that we use in order to send emails out. If you didn't watch those videos, uh, check out the link in the description. Uh, it's really helpful just to get started with those first. And then once you get here, you'll have enough context in order to actually do the email routing that we're about to do right now. So uh, we don't really need any of this stuff. So let's just go ahead and just clear it out. So we'll just go ahead and just delete all these rows. We don't need it. And then going over to our form, uh, we'll just go ahead and delete all those responses. So we can actually go over here and delete all the responses that we have just this so that we can start off on a clean slate here. Because what we're actually going to do is we're going to edit the, uh, the questions that we have. And we're not going to want to have um, a bit of discrepancy there. So we need to reload this. And we have now zero responses, which is looking good. Okay, so on the Google form, we're just gonna add in a dropdown. This is going to act as our router over here. So we're gonna say request type. And we're gonna say drop down. So let's go ahead and just say finance. Oh, maybe not finance, refund. Let's say that or general support, and then we'll do refund. And then let's say, I don't know, technical question. All right, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and just demo uh, our form over here. So up on the upper right, you're gonna see a little eye icon, and that's the preview icon. So you click on that, we're gonna be able to see our form. We can see what the request type is, you can select that. And then you're going to just put in the information. So let's just say Joe test one. And then the email that we're going to use right now is bootstrapping dot tools and that's demo. So we submit that. And thanks to the code that we wrote, uh, in the last session over here, it should be able to send our email over to the intended person, which is going to be this one right here. I should actually no logs, but that's because we're already going to get one over here so we can say thanks for participating on our survey uh joe test one but we don't need any of that code because we're actually not going to send it over to our person so let's just go ahead and comment a bunch of this out we can comment out the gmail app part too but so what we want to do is we want to get the information out of uh, our form response so if you remember last time it was the named values uh, that we were able to do that so within the name values, especially we can uncomment this so that we get the value out. And then we're just gonna say console.log and we're just gonna put in the name values into our output so that we can see what that looks like. So let's save this and then we're just gonna go ahead and resubmit. Say general support, go test two. 
and the email same thing demo at bootstrapping dot tools once we submit that and then we go over to our executions because we're doing a console log we should be able to see the name values in there so let's just complete it so it's an object there are several objects in there so what we'll have to do is we're going to have to figure out uh, what those values are so we can start to say it's probably just request type so the name values are typically the same name as the question. Um, so that's actually why for our name, we had what's your name. We can actually uncomment these out so we get the values out of there. We can comment this, uh, copy this down and use that as the request type. So we can say request type. And then in our question, it's just request type. So let's go ahead and replace this section with that. And we'll take our console log and instead of saying name values, let's just go ahead and say request type here. So we'll test this one more time. It's, gonna, it's a refund question, Joe test three, demo at bootstrapping.tools. So we submit that. And then thanks to our trigger, we would see another one come in. And so the request type is refunds. So now that we have this working, uh, we're getting these name values. What we're going to do is we're going to create a switch statement, which is going to allow us to redirect uh, those requests over to the right appropriate people. So we take in uh, our, go back to our code over here. We're just going to do a switch statement. So how that works is it's going to be switch, right? And then you're going to put in request type as the variable. Whoop. And then within here, we're just going to say, the first case is going to be general support, and then we'll do a refund and then technical question. So going back over to our code, so the case is this. We're going to say var recipient, so whoop, destination. Yeah, let's call it, let's call it department. Department equals, and let's just say support at bootstrapping.tools for now. Oh, so remember you need to do a colon over here. And then here we're gonna break. Then we're gonna do another case statement. So we're gonna do a total of three different statements. So let's go ahead and just copy this down, make it easier for us in the long run. And then we're gonna have to add in the default, which we'll just break as well. So Going back over to our form, we got to do the copy in the values so that it's direct match. So we can have technical question down here and then refund is the last one. So say department. We can actually declare this a little ahead of time. So we can say department up here. It's equal to blank. Let's actually call this department email, make it super clear. So we don't have to declare this anymore with the var. We'll just say department email is equal to that. And then the technical question, we've got to add that as well. So for the refund, let's say it's finance and then technical question, let's just say tech. So now what, what, what this code is essentially doing is within the switch, uh, once we get the name values from the triggered event, we're going to grab the request type from it, which is by saying name values request type. And then we're going to compare it using a switch statement to see what the value was. If it was general support, I'm going to set the email over to support at bootstrapping.tools. If it's a refund, we're going to say finance at bootstrapping.tools. And then if it's a technical question, we're going to send it over to tech at bootstrapping.tools. So at the end of this, what we'll want to do is we're just going to do a console log and we're just going to write out uh, the department email. So depending on what is happening in here, that's going to be the email that we essentially use. So go ahead and save that. And going over here, let's also add in another question here just to say like actual request. So that's going to be a paragraph. Now this would be a normal thing so we can rearrange some of our questions here. So, so we could say, what's your name is up top and then what's your email is over there. And then we'll have request type and request. 
So going over to our form, we hit the refresh button. We can see the new order of things. Also request is at the bottom. So we're gonna say Joe test three. And then the email we're gonna use is bootstrapping, demo at bootstrapping.tools. The request type, let's say we're gonna use a technical question right now. And then the request is this isn't working as expected, which is not to say that this isn't working as expected. I just need to say something. This is working exactly as expected, uh, but hit the uh, submit button. And then we're going to go over to our executions. We're going to see that it executed 37. We're going to see the information out here and it looks like it's actually blank. So we need to see why that is blank. Going over to our code. Let's see, what did we do wrong? Permit email, Let's save bar. Let me just declare it like that and then we equal it to this. Terminal email. I think that should work. I think I'm missing something. Uh, let me see here, let me think about this. Uh, are we supposed to? Hmm. All right, let's try that one more time. Joe tests, I think we're up to number five now. Demo at bootstrapping tools, quest type, general support. I need help. All right, let's go over to our executions and see what's going on here. So it's the old one, here's the new one completed. Department email is undefined. So this might have to do with scopes here. Let me, uh, let me think about this real quick. Hold on. Uh, what we might need to do. Oh, we might. Oh, we have to return. Ha. Huh. Make sure you do that. Uh, I got to return things in there. So return department email equals that. That should be fine. I think that should work. Let's save that. Test it one more time. What are we? Test six. Test number six. Demo at bootstrapping.tools. So we're gonna choose, it says to say refund this time. I want my money back. So we submit, go over to our executions, wait for this to refresh itself so that we can see it in the logs. Okay, here we go. This is the brand new one. Might need a little bit of time. It's still undefined. Why is it undefined? I'm not entirely sure. Let me think about this. Mm hmm. Very interesting. I'm returning though. Maybe that's not how I use it. Hold on. All right. So actually it turns out we don't need these return statements. Of course, we're just trying random things out. What actually turns out to be the issue is that over here, our request type that we get back is actually not a string. So we're going to say two string over here. That way when we are actually um, comparing these values against the request type that is actually going to match up. So now that we have this uh, set up, we're just going to go ahead and test this one more time with everybody. So we're going to say go test seven, and then it's going to be demo at bootstrapping.tools. We're going to set the request type to technical question. I need tech help. And so what we expect to uh, output into the console log is that the email address for the department email should be tech at bootstrapping not tools. Let's go ahead and submit that. Go back over to our executions. See the latest one over here. Refresh the log. We can see here now the department email outside of the switch statement is tech at bootstrapping dot tools. It's because we're getting technical question uh, back from there. So going back over to our code. That's uh, basically the final step that we need. And then we're not actually gonna send the emails because those emails don't actually exist. Uh, support finance and tech at bootstrapping don't exist. Those are fake email addresses that we're just using here. But essentially what you would do here is you get the department email and then you say um, gmail app send email and then you put the department email in there and then you can say new submission and you can make a new body out of it um, if you want. But uh, depending on the request type, you just use a switch statement over here. Make sure that you are doing two string for that value. Otherwise, it's not going to be in a string format. 
um, you just need to convert over to a string so that you can use it against uh, the switch statement to determine what the value was and then route the email accordingly or rather just set the email accordingly and then from there you'll just do the uh, gmail app.send email and use the department email in there as the recipient and you can customize the body and the message and everything like that if you wanted the body to say different things um, you can just go ahead and do what we did up here so instead of using this body up here you say department email you can declare body as well up there and you can say this is a tech request and then you can do the same thing for all this this is a refund request and then this is a support request and then all those bodies will just get used once you get down to this line of code um, down over here they'll just take in the variable that you're setting according to your switch statement But that's uh, basically it for this video. Just remember uh, the way that you're going to do it is you're going to set up a new uh, question in your Google form and that's going to be a drop down value. So when you uh, have your trigger uh, set up to um, get get fired off when a form submit happens, uh, you're going to get the name values from that. So that's going to be, you know, if you're passing E as the parameter, you're going to do E dot name values. And from there, you're going to copy in the question name. So if it's request type, that's all it is. You're going to say name values, open um, square bracket, then the name of the question and then close square brackets. Uh, and then make sure you turn that to a string so that you can use it in a switch statement. And that switch statement will just have all the different options that you have. And depending on the option that is selected, you're just gonna route it to a different email. So you're gonna set the email and you're also, you can also set the body. You can do a bunch of other things, whatever you want. You can treat it just like its own block of code. Once you have that, that's exactly how you're going to be able to route different emails to different people or departments according to what the uh, submission says uh, in that drop down or that selection based on that custom value. But if you did run into any issues, feel free to drop a comment in the section below. Uh, we're always happy to help and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. But if you did like this video, make sure to hit that like button. Uh, it's the best way to support this channel and ensure that we can continue making content for all of you. Subscribe to Bootstrappers out there looking to supercharge their workflows and operations. Uh, we got lots of videos coming up. Uh, we got a couple more on this segment specifically about Google Forms and Google Sheets and automating some of those tasks. I think the next one we're going to do is we're going to dynamically update the drop down values within a Google Form by using your Google Sheet as the configuration point. But stay tuned for that and we've got lots of other videos so make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so you get notified when we release those next videos but i'm a guy called joe this is bootstrapping tools let's build it's been a pleasure and we're out